Welcome back to the Trade Hacker Mindset. In this episode, we have a special guest with us today, and he's going to tell his trading story. Trading the markets can be difficult to master and seemingly just out of reach. Professional traders have a secret. Trading requires total mental and emotional control. It requires the Trade Hacker Mindset. All right, so let's jump into this discussion. I have one of our very own community members, Krish, with us today. Welcome, Krish. How are you, sir? I'm fine, Steve. Uh, wonderful to talk to you and the rest of the community through this podcast. Uh, thanks, first of all, thanks very much for having me on. Um, I hope whatever we discuss during this uh, session is quite useful and interesting for the listeners. Thanks very much, Steve, again. Yeah, absolutely. Great to have you. I, I uh, you know, you've been you've been a very active member of our community for how long has it been now? Two and a half, three I years? A little over two and a half. See, the, the moment I started trading the U.S. market uh, by hook or crook, uh, initially I was doing something on my own. And then um, I made some money, lost some money, whatever that is. But then that is when Parish told me, you should you should talk to this guy and he's really good. See, I'm a, being what I am, I'm very skeptical of uh, people in the sense that, you know, my past history also goes back like that when people promise you a lot and eventually take you down a path where end of the day they show you nothing but, uh, you know, losses is not the way I wanted to do. So right. having got hit a few times with uh, people of that sort, I decided, I said, whatever happens, let me start doing things on my own, whether it's... Uh, profit or loss or whatever it is, it will stay with me. So I started doing things on my own, fairly successful because my understanding of the market is a little bit different. And then later on, uh, when Paresh referred me to you and I should really thank Paresh for what he has done to me, um, I stumbled upon you and I really took off with you. I initially, to be honest with you, Steve, I was very skeptical of the whole thing. All right. Because As you should be. Yeah. And and people always show a nice spreadsheet. They create a nice spreadsheet. They say, okay, I've done 100 trades. My success rate is 90 plus percent. I made, uh, I invested so much money. I made so much money. You can also do the same thing, right? And then finally, when you start doing it, it's nowhere near what, what was shown earlier on. And finally, you, you're you taking down a rat hole and you find yourself in deep shit and you walk away from there. Right, so right. I was skeptical, but, but truth be told, um, Steve, I was... While I was skeptical, I was keenly watching all your trades, right? So one thing that I wanted to do is there are certain things that you will be successful in. Just because you are successful in something doesn't mean that I also have to be successful in the same 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 place, right? So I was watching you, watching you, watching you, and I took the trades that A, helped me be successful, B, ease of execution, right? Because to be honest with you, Steve, what you do, I don't understand 100% of all your trades, okay? There are some portions of the trade where I'm even lost, I should say that, or I should accept it honestly, all right? But I go learn behind the scenes, I try to understand everything, and then I take what is my, my favorite cup of tea and I drink out of that. So when I started, I started purely with the day trades, like when you were leading the sessions in the morning, uh, I was, it, it, I slowly started learning. Initially, I, I, I was doing a very, very small quantity, okay? So just to get my hands and uh, legs wet with the whole thing, I did not do the paper trades. I should accept that, you know, you said do 100 paper trades before getting in there. Why I didn't do 100 paper trades? A, because of an arrogance saying, I know this market. Sure. B, because I don't have the patience to trade 100, 100 trades on paper, seeing all the green there, but not really, you know, not able to touch it. Okay, it's it's just vapor. I didn't want to do that. So I said, okay, fine. But before doing that, like I said, I understood the trades very well, right? So then, then I started trading the day trades, which was fairly successful to me. But like, like all those people who think they know much better than uh, the rest of the world, I started putting in my filters there. All right. So there I, let's say you enter Netflix, for example. You went long with Netflix. 
I also went along with you, but there are certain trades I will not take, even if you take along, because I put in some of my indicators uh, to show. And, and sometimes, most of the times, I was fairly successful there, in the sense that some of the trades where you got hit, I will not even be in the trade. But then over a period of time, I realized that, you know, either I follow what system you have developed, get, get my trust going on in that, and simply follow it, right? And over a period of time, like how you said, the probabilities play its part and give you the uh, required results, and that's what happened. So now I'm trading, taking away all my thinking, my filters out. Unless I see something starkly missing in your trades, I will definitely do the trades also. And I go with you, I am fairly successful. Well, Next I think is, I think that, yeah. and not to cut you off, but I think that's a yeah. uh, kind of feeding off of what you're saying. I think it's a really important, important point to, uh, to point out. And, I, and you hear me say it all the time in the community is that, you know, this, this isn't about copying my trades, right? It's, right. Not, a, it's right. not about, you know, trying to get the same fills or doing the same number of contracts or, or, or even mimicking exact trades. The idea and what you've done really well on is learning the how and why and when we place trades so that you can take that and you can take those trades on your own. So, you know, one of the thing that I think a lot of, you know, trade services or, you know, course sellers are about is they're about just giving you enough to keep you there so that you have to follow exactly. them. Right. Exactly. And, and yeah. we, we try to do the opposite, right? We, we try to give you everything and build you up so that you can trade on your own. Now, does that, that typically means we're not going to grow as fast or as big because people are going to be able to take everything that we've got and they're going to go do it on their own. And nothing makes me happier than that. I, you know, I, I, would, I love people and we have a great group of members who are just a good core group who just thrive in the community and they understand the value of having others in the community of like-minded traders. But you know, a lot of them are professional traders. A lot of them can do this on their own. They don't, they don't need my trade alerts. They don't need to copy my trades. And that's, Absolutely. that's what it's all about. It's about learning how to trade on your own and really building a foundation that you can, that you can use. Absolutely. See, one thing I realized, copying your trades is not going to help anybody. Right. All right. It, it, it's good as long as a trade goes very well and you make money out of it. Now, when the trade starts going against you for some reason, you wouldn't know what to do because you have not understood the particular trade. So understanding what, what you have built, and you have done a great job, Steve. I should just give it to you, the kind of research you have done and whatnot, right, in, in putting the trades together, all right? See, when I was trading the Indian market, I started trading sometime in 1991, right, where, and if you know the Indian markets, it is not as mature as the U.S. markets. Even today, it's like that. Right? It's not as what? As liquid? As mature as mature. the U.S. Market. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, right. So in the U.S. market, it's it's very, I won't call the U.S. market a perfect market, but it's very close to being a perfect market. But it's completely opposite of that when you go to an Indian market. Right. In 91, we started trading with nothing. I mean, we don't have systems. We don't have... Uh, even an Excel spreadsheet was not available at that point in time. We used to uh, use, um, what is it called, a Lotus 1, 2, 3, mm. to, uh, you know, plot the numbers on a daily basis, create your own graphs and see it. It's not as comfortable as what we do today. With the click of a button, you get, you can change charts, you can change everything, time frames, this, that, everything. We used to do it on a machine, personally sitting down there, Putting in, uh, entering the open high low close for each day and creating the graphs manually in a Lotus 123 spreadsheet and keep going with that. It was a very slow, painful process. And, and what, but, kind of, what kind of commissions were you paying on trades? It was 6% of the trade. It's 6%. not a number. Yeah, it was 6%. Some brokers charged even 10 to 12%. Depending on the brokers you uh, worked with, it's it's a rate that gave you people uh, with the because I know broker community quite well and I'm quite closely associated with that. At that point in time, it was six percent. Wow! Right. So and we got people complaining about fifty cents per contract these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, Steve. That's really surprising. 
but you know given where we are you know you cannot you cannot compare 1991 to 2023 right? right so it's a completely different world today the whole thing has evolved in a different way and those were the days remember where people we were trading out of information okay right. so if let's say you come and tell me go by reliance today i know that you know there is the huge buyer coming in tomorrow you don't even think about it you just go headlong buy it and you will see a pop tomorrow, depending on who gives you the information. So yeah. most of it was information based. And so when you're right. when you're trading the Indian markets, you are simply buying and selling publicly traded Indian companies. Is that correct? That's correct. That not, is correct. No, no options or anything like that. Just just options purely directional buying stocks. Yes. yes. No options are not even a concept at that point in time. Gotcha. It's only purely stocks. You buy the stocks, sell the stocks. You sell the stocks, you buy the stocks. That's all it gotcha. is. Simple and straightforward. And, and so and then what year the, what year did you start trading the US markets then? Uh I started trading the US market just 4 years ago. Okay. Okay. And but, and and to walk us through that. What was your what was your journey there? Were you were you did you start off just trading US stocks at that point? Okay. Excellent. I didn't go into the stock route at all. I went with the futures. Okay. All right. Primarily I was trading um uh, uh, ES uh, futures and and I used the same kind of tools that I used to do with my Indian trading. Remember, we, even when I was I came to this country in 1998, right? Um, and I have been trading the e U.S. markets even from 1988 sitting here. All right. So sometime during 2019, 2020 is when I had some health issues where I couldn't stay awake through the night and whatnot because of the time zone difference. So I said, enough is enough. I'm going to stop this. Let me let me start applying the techniques that I know with uh, the U.S. markets. One thing I'm good at, Steve, is I can read charts quite well. Looking at, uh, and I had, I did not go with a lot of parameters, simple moving averages, uh, using candlesticks. These were the two major things that I used. And looking at divergence and charts and using levels, I, I was just simply trading the market. And and to be honest with you, I have put in the same parameters into the NTT trades. That's what I was trying to explain. And that's what you will see in my chart also, where you where I say the 60 minute flip. Because I believe that, you know, for the daily to run in the direction you want to run, the 60 minutes should also be with you. Okay, the 60 minutes is against you, you're wasting your time right there. You can wait for a better entry before going in there. Right. So, so for that, that so for listeners, uh, the NTT, what Krisha is talking about is our navigation trend trading. And he's taken what we teach and 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 what we what we do with our NTT system and he's applied a, a little bit of a twist to make it his own with a with using both a sixty minute chart and a daily chart. So so go ahead. So yes. my entry will be based on the daily chart, but I wait for my sixty minutes to give that give that flip to say yes, this is the time to enter. And 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 to be honest, I have found it very very profitable using using that filter. I've just used just one filter, nothing else. And rest of the I do the double calendars right now. I don't use any of my inputs. I simply follow what what you have taught in the in the program in the class, and I just follow that. And there was a time when I was just waiting for you to send a double calendar to enter. But today I don't need it because when I when I see the, uh, the IV going down. Uh, I really know where to enter, how to enter, and whatnot. I so, love that. So, so you're so you're trade. So now you're trading the NTT, the navigation trend trading. You are mm -hmm. trading different types of calendars and double calendars. Yes. Uh, yes. You are doing the day trading uh, that Chad runs with our Mighty Ninety and, and Runner strategy. You're doing yes. our zero DTE uh, SPX spread strategies. What else are you doing? Yes. That's it. That's it. Okay, That's all cool. I do. That's all I do. That's I tried doing a little bit of iron ducks, which didn't work for me very well. So then I was looking at the risk return to my profile. I thought it's not my cup of tea. So I just watch it, but I don't trade the iron ducks. Um, hedgehogs, I put in a lot of hedgehog trades, but so far I've not been successful, but I still keep doing it. Okay. Maybe the period where I started is not good. And and unfortunately for hedgehogs, I'm not able to do the futures in it. So now that I move to toss, I plan to do the futures like oil, uh, gold, etc., which which will which will 
which should pay over a period of time. I see. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Well, one one thing that I I, I try to I try to tell folks too who join our community because they you know I put out a lot of trades right and I trade a lot of different strategies and I think sometimes it puts off the impression that that's what you have to do right you have to come in and you have to learn every single strategy that I trade and you have to just be an, a super active trader. But what I've really found is some of our most successful members are those who just focus on one or two or three or, you know, it, it, does just, it doesn't have to be all, but they find their niche as far as which strategies they really gravitate to and what fits their personality from a duration or a just a, a structure of the trade. And that's when you really start to take off is once you figure out, OK, here's what I really like. I don't. And, and coming to the realization that, hey, I don't have to trade everything, right? I can just trade the stuff that I like and be very successful at doing it. Uh, you know, I think that that sometimes is a little bit of an aha moment for, for a lot of people. Rightly said, Steve. So if you look at the mindset game on, on what you said just now, right? So if I, if I want to impersonate you, if I, both in terms of size and both in terms of the number of trades I take, in my view, I may not be getting into the right path. A, because I can't copy your size. Your trading size will be completely different from what I trade. B, I need to take trades where I am comfortable in dealing with those trades, making adjustments, making the trade. Even if the trade goes against me, I should be able to fathom it and say, yes, I did the trade. I'm fine with it. It went against me. I'll take a hit this time, but I'll come back next time. So unless you're prepared for that, I don't think you should take it. The grass is always green on the other side. doesn't mean that you need to keep moving around every time, finding the right patch. Then you go to the other side, you will find it yellow. That's what will happen. Yeah. And right. I think uh, to dovetail onto that, you know, that, that's, why, that's why no one has ever been successful long term. Nobody's ever been consistently successful trading long term, just copying somebody else's trades. You know, not to be not not to beat a dead horse with this topic, but it's so important because until you do your own due diligence, until you do your own, you take ownership of that strategy and understand the strategy, that's the only way that you're ever going to be successful, right? Because you know, if if you're just copying somebody else's trade or trades, and that person goes through a string of losing trades, you have zero confidence in that strategy. You know, Absolutely. but if I if I go through a string of losers and it's my strategy and I designed it and I own it, then I understand the probabilities of it. I understand the structure of it. I understand why I'm having losing trades. And it's not even going to make me blink from a standpoint of losing confidence. But if somebody's copying those, it's a totally different ball game. So yes. I just wanted to hit on that one more time. It's such a critical component. Let let me tell you something else also, Steve, on, on, on a similar kind of a topic, right? So what happens is people are very comfortable taking strategies and trades aligned to that strategy as long as these strategies are successful for them, right? Let's say they take 10 trades. Let's say nine out of 10 is successful for them. They're very happy about it, all right? And then let's say the next two, three trades, consecutive trades are in the red, right? Some amount of doubt comes in right here. Am I doing the right strategy? It's, why is why am I getting hit three times? Then the fourth time you get hit, you really start questioning it, saying, now there is definitely something wrong with the strategy. Let me go open the hood to see what is wrong inside. And you start meddling with that. You may change certain parameters. You may change a few things. And all those things happen, which will take you deeper into the red. In my mind, I can, I can say this with surety, Steve, and I would like you to also uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the sense that any strategy, there will be a time when it will not perform well. That doesn't mean the strategy is not good. It just, there is a certain period of time when the market conditions are not suitable. The best example would be NTT right now. It is, it, it is tough right now. In this market, the NTT trades are quite tough. Not every trade go, go the way you want it to go because of the market conditions. It is not a trendy market. It is in a particular range, goes up and down, goes up and down, not conducive for entity. That doesn't mean 
NTT strategy is a bad strategy and we should stop it. It's just that one has to be patient with it. And there will be a time when it just gives back whatever it takes. If if one doesn't understand that, it's going to be extremely difficult. As a very trader. very well said, yeah, I couldn't couldn't uh, couldn't agree more. Yes, so that's one thing. And also, I'm not a twenty four seven trader, right? Uh, my trading time within 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 a, what the market is open for six hours, is that right? Mm-hmm. So within six hours, if I can get morning one hour one and a half hours. And evening that one, one and a half hours, I'm in a great shape, right? Rest of the day, here and there, I look at the screen, uh, put in some calendar trades for which you don't have to keep staring at the screen forever. That is that is my my kind of a day for you, right? I'm in client meetings. I'm in so many other meetings. So many things happen around me. So I cannot be distracted when I'm also trading, when I'm also in my work, right? Until I graduate to a time point where I'm a full-time 24-7 trader, I will have to do what is more comfortable for me. So if you have a bag of strategies, I will pick strategies that is suiting me for the day, how I can execute the trades and get going. To me, executing a certain strategy is more important than the strategy itself. The strategy may be the best one, but if I'm not able to execute to it, it's useless to me. So well, that's a great point. Our, and that, that's a that's a question that I get all the time is, you know, what what strategies should I focus on? Because I have a full time job. Right? right. And so, you know, and, and, and there's no cookie cutter answer. Right. There's no answer for everyone. Everyone's schedule is different. Everyone, you yes. know, wor- works a little bit differently. They, maybe they have free time in the morning, but not the afternoon or free time in the afternoon, not the morning or w- whatever it might be. So it's, it's really just a matter of figuring that out. And, and so there is no magic magic answer as far as what what's the best strategy for for everyone who has a full-time job but you figured it out right just like you said and i I wasn't even aware of that so you've got so you really you've got that hour hour and a half in the morning when the market opens and then you can sporadically check it throughout the day but you're a busy guy right from what i understand you you run a pretty large team in the it world oh yeah absolutely absolutely and that takes that's my bread and butter and i can't do anything to you know hurt it right now so at least for the next few years. So so this is a good beginning for me where I'm learning my limitations. I'm trying to stretch my limits also. So so that in, in a lot of ways my lifestyle also helps me helps me a lot because I don't get worked up or tensed up for anything that happens. So uh, that's the way I'm conditioned for a period of time and that's that's what I was talking to you about. In fact, there were times uh, uh, Steve when when, when I moved from uh, the US to India for a period of about seven years, I decided to take up some charity work. So I have, I took it up, I left my lucrative job with a bearing point at that point in time. So I went back to India to set up rural school for poor children, right? So I have established about eight schools, over 10,000 children are learning there and during that time, I never took a penny of salary or anything from anybody. I had a small kitty with me, which I thought I can grow and really make money out of it, which I put on the market where I traded. Just one day, it's, it's, it's right here with me. Just one day, I was well into the money. I should have booked profits and walked away with a good amount of profit. I was waiting for a 20-point move to get just 20 rupees, okay, nothing more than that, to get get out of the trade, which I did not do, the market didn't go there, it crashed. It crashed and literally took me out into the streets. I didn't have any money left after that. And what year was this? This was in um, 2008, 2009. Mm. Okay, I think it was a subprime crisis or whatever Mm -hmm. that is, when the whole whole market went down, right? So... I realized I was trading a bigger size than what I should do, right? And two, I was assuming more risk than what I should have taken at that point in time, all right? That was a huge lesson, but it was extremely costly lesson for me. So despite that, I I turned it around, took took in some more money, had some, in fact, I borrowed money from my friends and uh, invested back in the market and got it back out. It took me about three, four years to do that, but that in a way gave me a lot of discipline into 
what needs to happen after after that kind of a disaster. So a lot of checks and balances I put in place not to trade bigger than what I should trade, not to assume risk just because I can see some big money coming in, still keeping it low. And this is helping me. I, I can refer this to the zero DTE trades that we do today, ASD. All right. Yeah. Zero DTE looks extremely lucrative. All right. When you look at it, oh man, it's like a ATM machine. You just go there, put your card in, and the money will ring out of it. No, it's not the way way to do it. And you have gotten a certain a certain cadence as to how the trade should be placed, what should be placed, and what not, which is extremely good. But at the same time, it gives money, it takes money, it gives money, it takes money. But if I trade bigger than my size, it, it has potential to wipe me out, right? So keeping the trades under what is comfortable for you. You might, you might not make $10,000 on one morning trade, but you may make a few hundred dollars on this. I may make a $700, $800 trade in a, with a morning trade. That is good for me. So on an average, if I make $50 a day for 200 trading days, it is thousand, it is hundred thousand dollars per year, right? I that's good money for anybody, right? right? But for me to do that, all I need is about twenty five, thirty thousand of capital, right? Simply put it, I'm not saying that is what I do today, but that is how I plan my uh, day and my plan my trade. Today, my my point in time is to make about two hundred dollars average on a daily basis, right? And with all the strategies that you have given, the entity trades, the day trades, what Chad is running today, the zero DTE, uh, the various double calendars. Earlier, earlier the calendars were just specific to the TGIFs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But now, today, almost every day you can have a calendar put in, right? The one twos, the two threes, the one threes, the five sevens, the six sevens, whatnot, and. Your, your portfolio is full with that. And you focusing on just SPX for that is good enough. And this can let you make 200 bucks a day. That's how, that's how I'm, I'm position sizing, planning, and moving forward. So this has really helped me. And this has helped me from where? From the past, from 20, 2008 to 2009, when I got flushed out, that helped me to bring, bring this back against you. So, and again, like I said, Planning it properly, ex execution is very important here, right? Zero DT is very easy to execute. At the same time, it's lucrative. It can also put you down. If one has that at the top of their mind, it really helps the trade as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, I think I think that's a, a trap that a lot of new traders and even experienced traders fall into where, you know, you see people posting all these profits. Oh, I made... $5,000 today, $10,000 today. I made, you know, 5% on my account today, 10% on my account today. You see these things and it makes you think, oh, I, I, I need to be doing that. Why, why can't I, why, you know, yes. why, why am I not doing that? And so it, it, you can fall in, you can really fall into a trap where you're, you're position sizing bigger than you should. And, you, and sometimes you don't even know it. And un unfortunately, you know, the way that a lot of people learn, <clears throat> including myself, uh, what, what, what a good position size is, is, is by taking a massive loss. You know, you mentioned the one that you took. I've mm -hmm. taken more than I care to talk, to talk <laughs> about over the years uh, yeah. that were bigger than I should have. Um, but it, so it's, it's unfortunately, they are painful, expensive lessons, but I, I'm not sure I know a trader who hasn't had to go through that to become successful, right? So yeah, it really, it is, really is just figuring that out for yourself. Right, and learning from mistakes is very, very important to be successful trade. If you ignore your mistakes and think, oh, see a lot of people I've seen, Steve, they blame the rest of the world for whatever that has happened to themselves, right? If a trade goes wrong, they don't look at why the trade went wrong. Maybe the setup is wrong. Maybe the timing is wrong. The execution is wrong. There may be so many other reasons. In, if you don't look at it and rectify it for the next time onwards, and you blame, oh, Steve gave me this trade and it, it's all screwed up. 
and the I broker, lost money. or it's the broker's fault. Yeah, yeah. Somebody, my neighbor, told me buy Apple today, and it didn't go with me, and it hit me hard. No, that's not the way to do it. So that's very important to learn. Of course, I'm just preaching to the choir here, um, Steve. I mean, you know better than me. It's best to look at mistakes and learn from it, and document each and every trade that one does, which which I do on a diligent basis. I have a big Excel spreadsheet where I have put in all the trades. I diligently, kind of, on at, at the end of the day when the trading day is over, I document. I write it in a piece of paper during the day, and at the end of the day, I put it in a spreadsheet and revisit that. And one thing that has helped Steve is the Options Omega, which uh, has been a great boon into uh, anybody's trading plan. Right? I, I'm sure. The whole community is full of it right now, but that really tells you exactly what you have done versus what was planned, right? If there is a delta there, if there is a discrepancy between what is what what should have been done, but what you have done, I would say go check it out, check it out and see truly if that is valid. If it is valid, where is the mistake, and try to understand the mistake and rectify it and move forward. One thing the O has done for uh, for me at least is to stay mechanical as much as possible, right? So being mechanical helps a lot, Steve. That's that's my experience so far. Um, I would like to know from you also because some of the trades it's better to be mechanical than anything else, right? Second guessing the trade is this the right trade? Will I if I wait for ten minutes will I get a better trade or should I skip today, come tomorrow, and do all those things? It may not be the right way to do it. Keep it mechanical. Keep it going. Probabilities will play play its part, and end of the day, it will keep you successful. And that's what I've seen with OO, and that's validated through the back test that we keep doing. Up, of course, it's a back test. It's it's something that happened in the past, not going forward. But at least it helps you keeps keeps you within the boundaries that you've defined for yourself to make sure that you stay in the ring and fight it out properly. That's what I'm thinking, Steve. Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, yeah, Option Omega has been a, a game changer. I mean, you know, it's it's amazing. Even after trading for 20 years, mm -hmm. something comes along and can make you better. Or you just tweak a little something in the way that you trade, and it can make a huge difference. But for me, yeah, it's not only helped me create better trade plans around the strategies that I've trade that I trade, but it's also you know, as you know, it's it's helped introduce new trading strategies around zero DTE, yep. around some of these calendars that I never would have even explored if it wasn't for Option Omega. And, and for me, it, it like I said, it helps me create a better trade plan. And it also helps create more confidence for me for a strategy because you can really dig in, go through the trade log, see when it did, when it worked, when it didn't work, why did it work? Why didn't it work? And, and, and it, it's not, nothing ever beats trading in real life, but it does allow you to really dig deep into the numbers and, and figure out different right. aspects of a strategy. So couldn't agree more. Right. And one would, one can argue that the past has got no relevance to the future, right? Just because uh, this happened for the last six months doesn't mean it should happen uh, going forward also. But at least you know from the past what hits you, what doesn't hit you. For like, for example, very simple example, FOMC days, we don't trade. All right. So where did we where did we come to know about it? I mean, you one can go through the trades to find out, yes, this doesn't work. But if you just go back to Option Omega and do a back test on FOMC to see how things pan out during those days, it gives a lot of uh, information out there. And it's very, very, it, it, it's, it's stalking in your eyes. You cannot miss it. Right. So that's the advantage that Option Omega has brought into the play. And thanks very much, uh, Steve, again, for bringing that into play. So yeah. um, I thought I was excited because I'm, I'm just hardly trading for the last three, four years. But you are a pro in this. You've been, uh, you've been there for a long term. And uh, uh, it's good to know that even you're excited with Option Omega. And it has changed the way that... You are looking at things moving forward and whatnot. Well, I tell you, I, I mean, I tell you this, every single year I learn something new. I, I'm a, like, I look at myself 10 years ago mm -hmm. and I thought I was a pretty darn good trader back then, 
Mm-hmm. I laugh at that guy. <laughs> he, he's a joke. He can't. That guy can't. That guy can't hold my computer bag compared to what you know what I know. So it's it's one of those things where, and that's one of the be- beautiful things about trading. What I love about it is it's a continual journey. I learn new stuff every single year, and. And that's also the beauty of, of our community, right? I mean, we've got a lot of smart people. We've got a lot of professional traders, full-time traders, and, um, and you know, and people that are much smarter than me. And I, and that's, you know, that's one of my goals that I've always had is I always want to surround myself with people that are smarter than me because that just helps you elevate to that next level. So yeah, it's, it's been a, uh, it's been a fun ride and, and I'm sure it's gonna, I'm sure it's gonna even just continue to get better. 10 years from now, I'll be laughing at this guy about how I traded, you know, I, it just, it just, that's just how it works. Yeah. Keep the mirror next to you. So, so you can look at yourself to talk through it. But, but I should say one more thing, uh, Steve, right? So one thing that I noticed, I mean, when, when we started this conversation, I was telling you how skeptical I was with, when somebody coming and telling me what to do, what, what trades to take and whatnot. See, the one thing that kind of pulled me into navigation trading is the transparency that you bring into the into play all right it's not a it's not made up trades you don't you know uh, pick up some successful trades uh, and say i have done this and i'm not the trades are there for time marked for everybody to come and see whether it's a profitable trade or it's a lost trade whatever that may be that can be done the most significant part which which i really appreciate and like about you is you are not what can I say? You're willing to even learn from people who can bring in a certain valid point to what you might have missed in, in when, when you formulate a certain trading strategy, right? When I, I, I have worked with a few other people also. They don't even want to listen to you, okay? All they'll say is shut up. We, I know what, what I'm doing with my trades. Just listen to what I'm saying. But that arrogance is not there with you, with you Steve. I, and I should point it out. I'm not saying this to you know, uh, praise you or anything of that sort. But this is reality. I feel I should I should share this with you and the rest of the community. And then well, comes I really the I really appreciate life. those comments. I think, you know, if once you get to the point where you don't think anybody can teach you anything, that's you're done. Right. I mean, yep. that's where you stop learning. Yep. 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 And second thing is the community itself. Right. Each one contributing just the two cents that is needed for this other person. I mean, that this community has come up quite very well where you can lean on them and ask them something in the middle of the night you post something you will see somebody giving you an answer for that okay if not you somebody will say do this do this this is what it is and what not so it is it's it to me it sounds like it's a huge family trading together it's just that everybody is sitting in different places but it's all one unified community moving forward with one single goal in mind. That's how I feel uh, with this whole thing, uh, Steve. Well, I've, I've said it many times and I'll say it again. You know, one, one, of the, one of the reasons that I started navigation trading to begin with is because when I started learning about options and I got super excited and started having success and then I started trying to share that with my family and friends and they just kind of looked at me like, I don't care. Why, why are you so excited? Why are you so excited about this? So I really, I needed my people around me, right? I needed yeah. like-minded traders. I needed other people who all they could think about was trading. And, and so that's, that's what the community has become. And it's, it's, a uh, it's been a fun ride. It's been, it's been pretty powerful to see yes. that grow. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Steve. Absolutely. Well, Chris, this has been fun. Um, one question before we go, if I, if, if I had a gun to your head and I said, mm-hmm. Chris, what's the one strategy? If you, if you could only trade one strategy, which, which one would it be? If you put a gun to my head and ask for one strategy and on a long-term basis, right? I would definitely opt for the double calendars. Right. Double calendars. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Many of the, I, I'm just calling it double calendars because you have TGIF one, one, two, and uh, three, five, etc. Anything. The basket of the double calendars would be the go-to strategy for me. Uh, the zero DT pays well, but uh, it 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 gets pulled and pushed for various reasons. But the double calendars are the one which is kind of rock solid and foundation and it stays there and and that's a game for a longer term that's why i chose chose that one steam yeah 
I, uh, I don't disagree with you. You know, I, if somebody asked me that question, I'd have a really hard time answering it. As you know, it's like trying to tell you which one of my children I love more, but you know, it's, uh, but that's definitely a good one. So, well, Chris, uh, is there anything else that you want to share with the community before we say goodbye? One thing I would like to definitely share with the community. First of all, I want to thank the entire community along with yourself for making this happen for not only for me, for the entire community itself. Like it's one, one tends to rub off, to rub off the other person. And I would, let's keep this going. That's how I would put it. The second thing is, I would say, enjoy the game of trading, right? Whether it's a loss or whether it's a profit, it doesn't really matter. One should really enjoy the trading, right? So don't get stressed out with this trade. If you're getting stressed out, if you're getting upset, if you're getting anxious, whatever it may be with this with this trading, I would say it's not for you, right? Then then you're 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 in the wrong place. Do something else, right? The day when you don't enjoy it, and for you to enjoy is be in the moment, right? Don't look at don't look at others to say it's because of you I made a mistake. No, it's because of yourself that. A mistake has happened. So go look for yourself, introspect, and be in the moment to to ride this forward. The moment you do that, you start enjoying every trade, no matter what the results are. Success is not far away. That's what that's that's how I would put it, Steve. Well, that's great advice, Krish. In fact, that's I mean that's great advice for anything you do in life, right? But yeah, specifically right. for trading because it can be such an emo- emotional roller coaster uh, until you until you really figure it out. So. Man, I really enjoyed this conversation. I know the community is going to get a lot from it. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for being such a great member and and active member in our community. And we'll look forward to continue it. Absolutely, Steve. Thanks very much for having me again. All right. Take care, Chris. Take care now. Bye.